Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. This is the last section in chapter 4 uh, and also the last thing about the Symbolex method. We will talk here about uh, Symbolex method with mixed constraints. Uh, we studied in the previous two sections uh, the maximization problem we studied the maximization problem where the constraints are written that are written such that all of them are less than or equal to a positive number and this is called maximization problem in standard form and we uh, mentioned how to solve such a problem and then we studied uh, minimizing or minimization problem also in standard form and all constraints in this case should be greater than or equal to a positive number and we use the dual maximize maximization problem to solve this minimization problem now in this section we will talk about uh, mixed constraints so maybe some of the constraints are less than and some of them are greater than in a maximization or minimization problem. So let us first talk about how to express the inequality as less than or equal to constraint if it is not less than or equal. So for example here, this inequality is greater than or equal. If I want to write it less than or equal, I multiply both sides by negative one. So I'll have negative 3x plus y. When I multiply by negative 1, I change the inequality from greater than to less than negative 5. So this is how we change the constraint from greater than to, to less than. Here, if I take negative 6x to the other side, so the inequality would be 6x plus y greater than or equal to 40. And now if I multiply by negative 1, I'll have negative 6x, negative y, less than or equal to negative 40. So this is the first point. We have to change all the constraints so less than, to less than or equal. So make all constraints less than or equal by multiplying both sides by negative 1. And then we use slack variables introduce slack variable variables and form the symbolix matrix as usual so for example here uh, how to solve this problem how to maximize this problem the first constraint is less than or equal that's okay but the second one is greater than or equal so we need to the first constraint we will write it as it is But the first one we multiply by negative one. And now we can introduce the slack variables. And we re rewrite the objective function. We take the two terms to the left hand side. So this is a maximization problem, but not in the standard form. And then we write the symbol X matrix. Coefficients of X1, coefficients of, well, uh, this is coefficients of x and y, okay? This is coefficients of x, coefficients of y, and s1, s2, and f. Now we notice that we have a negative number here, negative six. So this is called the upper portion of the last column. 
if we find the negative number in the upper portion of the last column, we select, we search for any negative entry in the same row and use its column as the pivot column. So here negative six is negative number. Search in this row, in the second row for a negative entry. Well, this number negative two is negative. So this column would be the pivot column. So the pivot column negative entry in the same row as the negative entry in the last column. Once you determine the pivot column, you started finding all the quotients for the entries above the line and determine the pivot element from the smallest positive quotient. So we start dividing 13 by 1, 13, negative 6 by negative 2, that's 3. So the smallest positive quotient is 3. So this row is the pivot row. This column is the pivot column. So negative 2 is the pivot entry. So this is a new method of pivoting. We use it when we have a negative number in the last uh, column. We make it 1, divide row 2 by negative 2, and then we use it to make the other two numbers zeros, and we get this matrix. If still we have a negative number here in the last column, we do the same pivoting method again. We use it again. But if there, is, if there is no negative numbers here, so we go back to our old method now, and we look to the indicators. If there is a negative number in the indicators, it would be the pivot, it will determine the pivot column. More than one negative number, we search for the most negative, and the most negative will determine the pivot column. So the pivot column here is the second column. As in section 4.3, if there is a negative number here, it is not used or zero. We search for positive numbers. So this is the only positive number, 5 over 2, in the pivot column. So it will be the pivot entry. So we multiply by 2 over 5 to make it 1 and use it to make other numbers zeros. And then we search for negative numbers in the indicators, no negative numbers. So this is a final matrix. So the conclusion would be the maximum value of F would be 17 and it occurs at this is x and it's a basic variable and this is the one so x equals 9 and y is also a basic variable and this is the one so y equals 4 and that's the solution of this problem so again you first change uh, all greater than to less than if it's a maximized problem and then you introduce like variables find the fairest simplex matrix search for a negative number here in the right hand side go to the same row in the same row search for another negative number to determine the, the pivot column divide choose the smallest positive quotient and determine the negative uh, determine uh, the pivot entry and continue as usual. Write the simplex matrix to maximize this function subject to these constraints. Well, first I will check for the constraints. The first one is okay, it's less than or equal to. The second one is greater than, so I will multiply, multiply by a negative sign. So, to write the simplex matrix, I introduce the slack variables. So, 3x plus 2y plus s1 equals 12. 
and I rewrite the objective function. And then I introduce, I write the simplex matrix, the first or the initial simplex matrix. Coefficients of x, coefficients of y, S1, S2, F, and the right hand side. He did not ask about uh, determining, that's what he asked about. So that's the answer. But if he says determine the first pivot entry, then I search in this row for a negative number. This is the pivot column. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. Negative 6 divided by negative 3 is 2. So negative 3 would be the pivot entry in this case. But this is what he asked for. Here, state the given problem in a form from which the simplex matrix can be formed. We can form the simplex matrix only if we have less than or equal to constraints. So, I have this is less than or equal, so that's okay. So this is part A. 7x plus 4y is less than or equal to 28, that's okay. But the other constraint is greater than, I'll multiply by negative sign to make it less than or equal. And now I introduce, now he says form the symbol X matrix and circle the first pivot entry. So let me introduce the slack variables. And rewrite the objective function. And then now I can write the symbol X matrix, the initial. F and the right hand side. So I put this line. This is the initial symbol X matrix. And to determine to circle the first pivot entry, I search for negative numbers in the last column. Yeah, negative two is negative. So search for a negative number in the second row, negative one. So this is the pivot column. After I determine the pivot column, I divide 28 divided by 4, that's 7. Negative 2 divided by negative 1, that's 2. So negative 1 is the pivot entry because 2 is the smallest positive quotient. So that's what he asked, circle the first pivot entry. Now what if the problem is minimize, not maximize? and constraints are mixed. In this case, we will minimize F by maximizing negative F. If you maximize negative F, you will be minimizing F. So, Whenever, the, whenever we see a problem minimize, the constraints are mixed, then we cannot use the dual problem. But I change it to maximize, so I write maximize. Maximize what? The function negative f. So negative f is a function, I multiply by negative. I multiply the objective function by negative sign, negative one. And negative f now is the function I need to maximize. I can call it 
whatever capital F or something. Subject to, and I need to write all the constraints less than or equal. So I multiply the first one by negative one and also the second one because it's greater than or equal. But the third one is fine. It's less than or equal. So no need, no need to change it. Now introduce the slack variables as usual. I'll have here a three slack variables because I have three constraints. And rewrite the objective function, the new objective function, this one. So taking negative three X to the other side will make it positive. And then plus negative f okay so my my function is negative f now write the coefficients of x coefficients of y s1 s2 s3 and coefficients of negative f so the coefficient of negative f is one okay so we write it like this and this would be the initial sample x matrix and now we search for negative numbers in the last column. I have two. Choose any one of them. If you have two, choose any one. Let me choose the first row, the one in the first row. Now go in this row and search for any negative numbers. I have two. Two negative numbers. Select any one of them. Okay, any one will work. So let me select the one in the first column. So now I determined the pivot column. The pivot column is the first column. Now I divide to determine the pivot entry, divide negative 20 by negative one, negative 25 by negative one, four by negative five. Well, four over five is smaller, but the problem it's negative. And we don't accept the negative. We take the smallest positive quotient. So 20 is the smallest positive quotient and negative one here, is the pivot entry. We make it one and we use it to make all the other numbers below it zeros. And now we search in the last column again. We still have a negative number. Good. So we go in the second row, search for negative numbers. We have two. Choose any one of them. So I'll choose the second row. You can choose the third and solve the problems, okay? Now divide, 20 divided by one, 20, negative five divided by negative one is five. One of four divided by six is, an, is a, a large number. So the smallest positive quotient is five and negative one here in the second row, second column is the pivot entry. Multiply by negative one to make it one, use it to make zeros. And now no negative enters in the last column. Search for the indicators, of course, the last column above, I mean, these numbers, these numbers. Well, while uh, negative F will be always negative because this, remember, this is negative F. So in this case, you will always see a negative number here because we are talking about negative F now. So now look to the indicators. All the indicators are positive. So this is a final matrix. That's it. What do we need? We need the minimum of F, not the maximum of negative F. I can tell that the maximum of negative F is negative 65, but I mean, I need the minimum of F. So the minimum of F, minimum value of F would be 65. And it, uh, it occurs when X is, X is a basic uh, a, a variable. So this is the one, so X is 15. Y is also basic, and this is the one. So Y is five. That's it, so this is the answer of this problem. The minimum is 65 
when x is 15 and y is 5. Let us check if x is 15 and y is 5. 4 times 5, 20 plus 45, that's actually 65. So that's good. Now here, state the given problem in a form from which the simplex method can be formed. E means constraints should be less than or equal. So the problem is minimize, so I will write it maximize. I will maximize negative g, the function negative g. So I will multiply the right hand side of g by a negative one. Subject to, let me write all the constraints again. The first one is less than, so I have no problem with it. The second one, two, is less than, so that's good. The third one is greater than, so I have to multiply by negative one. So x minus two y less than or equal to negative four. So this is the answer of part A. Part B, form the simple X matrix and circle the first pivot entry. Well, I need to introduce the slack variables. I will have a three slack variables because we have three constraints now this objective function rewrite it take everything to the left hand side and negative g is your function so the coefficients of x are The coefficients of y are the coefficients of S1, S2, S3, F, or negative G. This is negative G. And then the right hand side 50, 80, negative 4, and 0. This is the first symbolic matrix. To circle the first pivot entry, look to this column. Do we have a negative number? Yeah, negative four. Search for negative numbers, negative two. So this is the pivot column. Now divide, 50 divided by negative five is negative 10. So this is not good. 80 divided by one is 80. Negative four divided by negative two is two. So that's the smallest positive quotient. So negative two is the pivot entry and that's the answer. That's part B of the question. Form the symbol X matrix. Now here the final symbol X matrix for a minimization problem is given. Well, find the solution. Well, this is actually maximization of negative f so the minimum value of f would be 120 at x equals 6 y equals 8 and z equals 12. So that's the answer of this problem. Let us use x to following to, to solve these exercises. Here it's a maximize problem with mixed constraints. Another maximize, minimize problem with mixed constraints. Another minimize problem with mixed constraints. Another maximize problem with mixed constraints. I will solve one of them because you just, uh, if you solve one of them, you can know how to solve all the others using Excel.
So let me use Excel to solve this one. Well, I wrote the variables. I have three variables here. So as usual, the first variable is should be equal to zero. The second should be equal to zero. The third should be equal to zero. And I can write the objective here or here. Okay. Uh, it would be equal to, it's a maximization problem. Even if it is a minimization problem, you use Excel, okay? You can use Excel to solve it. And you write it as it is. You write the objective function as it is. So two times X now is this one. Minus one times Y, this is Y. And plus four times Z, and this is Z. So this is actually the objective uh, function. Now let us write the constraints. Well, the first constraint is X plus Y plus Z. So X plus Y plus Z. Okay. Uh, the second one is X minus Y minus Z. You don't change any of the constraints. Here you use Excel, so don't worry about anything. Excel will take care. So negative one times Y plus Z. This is the second constraint. And the third constraint is uh, equals X plus Y and minus one times Z. Good. Now here, the right hand side of each constraint, this is eight and this is four and this is two. And let me write here that this is less than or equal. And the other one is greater than to remember when I put them in the solver. And the last one is also greater than. So let me now go to data. This is data. Go to solver and solve this problem. Reset all, all the previous. And here he needs the objective. This is the objective function. Is it a maximization or minimization? Well, this problem is maximization, so I'll keep it. If it is minimization, you just uh, click on minimization. Uh, variables, these are here, put the variables. These are the three variables. And here, let us add the constraints. So the first one should be less than. So it's already less than. So less than this cell. So this is the first one. The second one is this one and should be greater than. So I change it to greater than. And then I put this one. Add it. The last constraint, this one, and it's also greater than. So greater than, and this is, this is the last one. So I'll tell him, okay. And now I'll ask him to solve. Keep the solutions. So this is the solution. The maximum you can write now the answer, or you can copy the answer. Okay. So maximum of F is 22. This number at X equals five. y equals 0 and z equals 3. As usual, let us check. Put x5, so I have 10 here, minus 0, so that's 10 plus 4 times 3. 10 plus 12 is actually 22. So that's the answer. Uh, and I think you will be able to do all the others using Excel. So have a nice time and enjoy 
uh, solving by Excel.